uh, updates, of course, to all the other cohorts because uh, 368 was promoted. 368 was um, just a hotfix release that fixed one problem with uh, compatibility with the new ATI drivers, um, we hope. Uh, so, um, and of course, that's being pulled into all the other branches and they're being really re-released. So there's the maintenance branch, it says here, has also been re-released and there will be a new one of the Google Breakpad branch. Um, so uh, that's coming. And then of course there are, there are other, other viewers coming, but that's sort of the rest of the, the topics. But um, that's the status of things. I haven't updated the uh, repositories wiki page yet, but I'll do that as soon as we're done with this meeting. Oh, or maybe I'll do it while somebody else is talking. Um, so, uh, interest list, which we, alas, were not able to discuss last week, we can discuss this week. So, Richard, you have the floor. Okay, uh, mic check. I have sort of the ad hoc set up here. At a third yeah, you're good. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, apolog apologies for uh, missing the meeting last week. That was a complete uh, screw up on my, my end of my schedule. So, sorry for wasting anyone's time. Um, yeah, so uh, the interesting project is uh, coming to an end, and I understand you guys have uh, got your hands on uh, the source and tried a, a build or two. Um, I This is my first TPV meeting in ages. I think I went to one before, so I, I'm sort of looking to you guys as, as to what you know questions you have and what you want to know from me. Otherwise, I can just go over the uh, what, what's in the project and what, uh, what changes are, are in that uh, beer repo. Is that pretty much what you want to hear? I think that'd probably be a good start, and I think folks will gather questions as you go. Okay, fair enough. So um, just uh, big picture, the uh, interesting project was just an attempt to optimize scene load. Um, we wanted to get rid of scenarios like walking into or flying into visible walls because they hadn't loaded yet. And so we did a bunch of work on both the server and viewer. The server uh, changes have largely already uh, been deployed. There are just a couple of things that I think are still in the queue. And so you guys have already seen the results of that. And uh, um, no one's complained, no one's jumped up and down and celebrated either as far as I know, but uh, we have made um, quite significant improvements to, to scene load just with the server changes. And then this viewer um, introduces uh, Another set of changes that are far more subtle is more about uh, uh, future potential than immediate gains, um, although it does improve um, scene loading uh, noticeably, but not as significantly as just the server changes. So what that amounts to is um, the, the way the viewer and server cooperate now has sort of changed the um, who, who's in the driver's seat before the server would be um, actively in control with the interest list telling you which objects you need to care about. And if you turn, you know, if you fly around or, or turn a look in a different direction, it would actively unsubscribe you from specific objects, send you uh, kill object messages. Um, and the idea was it was the uh, the server was just trying to, you know, um, maintain a, uh, keep track of what things it needed to tell you about and uh, also you know, keep track of the viewer's footprint and whatnot just by actively unloading stuff. So with the new system, and viewer interesting, the, uh, the viewer is uh, completely in charge of that. So what happens is when you log in or TP somewhere and you don't have stuff in cache, the simulator will go ahead and send you, as before, you know, all the objects that are in front of you will, will now with our new server changes, it will send you the stuff that's closer and bigger first. Um, but uh, after it sends you stuff that's that's strictly in view, it will also send you everything else that's in the region um, with the assumption that that's going to be useful to you at some point. And the viewer will then be responsible for throwing that in the cache and then demand loading it as you, uh, as you fly around the, the region or, or what have you. Um, so basically, the, we're attempting to give the entire region's contents to the viewer and let the viewer be smart about what's in memory and and balancing the uh, performance and memory trade-offs there. Uh, there are also a couple other changes. Uh, one thing we do is if you um, 
if you log into a region you've never been to before and you don't have a cache file, we go ahead and we tell the simulator that uh, during the handshake and the simulator won't even bother trying to ask you if, for each object in the region if you have it in your cache because you don't have a cache and it's just an obvious optimization we missed before. And that, that alone um, shaves off a few seconds of, of simulator time. Um, and then uh, some other under the hood work. Um, I've introduced a new metric system for um, just because we wanted to be able to measure the results as we implemented things um, and get objective results instead of just, oh, that looks faster. Um, I, I overhauled our metrics gathering system. There's a new system called LL Trace, which basically unifies things like fast timers and you know, various sampling metrics into a, a single fast and flexible system. And so that's uh, the impact, immediate impact to you guys is just that the, you know, if you if you've had any stats uh, to the code, uh, there's just a new way of doing that, and you just have to change some of the syntax there. But um, but that does open up uh, a lot of uh, future possibilities for uh, fine granularity tracking of like you know why is it why is opening the reference window so slow? Well, now we can actually record everything that happens during the opening of the reference window and and log that if we want to. So it just, just gives us a lot more flexibility. And anyway, so the, the state of the viewer now is, uh, as some of you noted, um, there were some bugs uh, with objects not loading. Uh, we think we fixed the last of those. Um, so you, we should have pretty reliable state mode now from cache or, or without cache. Um, and we're just looking at one performance regression uh, related to uh, you know, if you have the graphics details turned up and you have shadows on. Um, there's a corner case where we use a lot more memory than we should, and so we're looking to that now. But other than that, we think we're in a good state with the viewer. Uh, we're going to give it a long soak time, so it's not going to it's, just, it's not going to go to uh, release for for a while. We'll be very honestly for, for quite some time and give you guys some time to uh, play with it and give us feedback. Um, and uh, I'm in the process of writing documentation of the changes uh, in the code, um, and I I have some preliminary documentation up on the yeah, um, the wiki, um, I can dig up that URL and uh, I'll type it in here. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Do you have a rough estimate on how long you're going to let that soak? Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I mean, it, it could be several weeks, I'm sure. Uh, Oz might be able to give me a better estimate just based on like the number of RCs that are, are currently active. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's an awful lot in the pipeline, um, and uh, it's going to end up depending on the relative stability and effectiveness of the various changes and which features that are coming up people want to get in in uh, residents' hands most quickly. So uh, that that actually isn't a very answerable question, I'm afraid. We're we're actually trying really hard not to have a schedule for what order we're going to do things in, that because it's kind of pointless. Uh, the goal is to release the best thing we have in hand at any given time, uh, where best is a is a function that's um, partially objective based on crash rate and reported bugs and so on, but also there's a subjective element of what's the relative importance of what's in it. Um, so uh, we're, uh, we do have a, a, an objective, a goal of not releasing, uh, of releasing roughly on two week intervals. Um, so uh, that's, uh, so the idea is to, is to, normally only promote every two weeks. Um, we just broke that rule deliberately for this hotfix release uh, because uh, a significant number of users had upgraded to this new ATI driver and they were stuck. So we needed to get, we needed to get a fix out uh, to support those. Latif, sorry, sorry, learn to talk. Latif has some good questions there. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll try to address that. So the the way um, the handshake works now is um, there are some there are some unused flags. In fact, a whole thirty bits of unused flags uh, for the region handshake when you um, connect to a region. 
And so we just took over two of them. Uh, one of them means that, um, hey, Sim, I don't have a, um, a cache file, so don't even bother asking. Um, so that you can just use uh, and get free performance. Uh, the other one is where we, um, if, you, if that flag is set, we, we're opting into the new model where the uh, simulator send do everything. So as long as you don't set that flag, and, and as far as I know, no existing viewers would set that flag, there'd, there'd be no point to it. The simulator ignored it before. Um, then you will get the old old style behavior. And um, there's no, um, as far as I know, there's no rush to deprecate the old style behavior. I, I think yeah, I was going to ask if, if you guys are planning on removing that, because we're, we're not likely, we're just about falling into a, a release mode now. And um, the interest list is a lot of code, and if we were to try to get it in this release, uh, it would set us back. So, um, yeah. No, as long it, as you guys are going to keep the old method going for, you know, six months or something. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that would be the case. There, there's really no reason for us to disable it. Um, I think, you know, eventually everyone will switch over because there are clear gains to be had with the new system, um, at which point we'll uh, revisit the decision to support the old mode. But, but frankly, um, it might not even be worth, uh, the way it was written, it's probably not even worth uh, deleting the old code. That would just you know, introduce a lot of changes that are unnecessary. So we might just keep that functionality around forever um, until the next time we do a major overhaul of the interest flow system, which will probably be a long time from now. I like that you're doing, that you're uh, allowing the viewer to handle some of the interest list stuff. If third party viewers were to find um, improvements, because in a way, by allowing the viewer to do some of that work, uh, it opens it up to third party viewers to modify how interest list works as well. Um, is the lab interested in in contributions of that nature? Oh yeah, I, I definitely say we are. Boss. Uh, yeah, emphatically. Um, one of the things that uh, I know Richard is working on is, uh, as he as he mentioned, is documentation of how to use the new uh, metrics system. That uh, that so. Um, I think what would be important is to be able to clearly document the, um, you know, using that system to measure, you know, here's here's the the nature of the improvement. But absolutely, we're we're certainly interested in in doing that. And um, one of the things that's nice about our new release system is that if we if we get a contribution like that, we can put it out there and give it to X number of users in, uh, you know, real users across Second Life, um, and then collect the stats from those users and see if they're getting better experience. So um, we actually we actually have a setup for, for doing uh, real A-B comparisons now. So um, that, that helps us do larger scale experiments than we might otherwise be able to do. Yeah, I'm having, having uh, issues logging to the wiki right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post that link in a sec. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, well, even if you want to just send it in um, the open source dev list afterwards, Richard, if you can't get it now. Yeah, that might make the most sense. Uh, it's still only about half complete. Um, in fact, the version that's on the public wiki is like a third complete because I kept getting logged out and frustrated editing it there. Um, but uh, I should have that done soon, and I'll, I'll post it to the mailing list. I'm really interested about these uh, new flags in the region handshake. That sounds very useful. Uh, able to disable these uh, interest list management on the server because there were a lot of bugs where the server would decide, okay, that object is behind your back, you don't see it, and it doesn't update. So we end up with stuff like uh, sliding doors not opening and closing correctly. Because if you open a sliding door and go through it and it closes behind your back, sometimes the server will decide, oh, you don't want to know about it. And then you turn around and the door looks to you as if it is open, but on the scene it's actually closed. Yeah, and unfortunately there's, there's limits to what the viewer can do in that respect because the viewer doesn't know what's actually happening to that door. So the best it can do is keep that, you know, decide whether to keep that door and its mesh and everything in memory. Um, it, it can't at this point tell the simulator that, oh, I really care about all the edits to this door. 
Um, that's still in the simulator's hands. But I mean, that, that's the sort of thing that I could see, um, you know, us trying to prove in the future. But, but again, that wouldn't be for a long time. Well, the issue Latif has mentioned there is actually pretty um, widely reported. But then I don't quite understand what, what, so you said there were some flags on region handshake, and one of them was to tell to the team, okay, don't ask if I have cached version of this object, just send me everything. And the other one was? The, the other flag uh, opts into this new system. It, it, this new system is primarily concerned with ca cacheable objects. And uh, one of the things we did with this project is redefine what cacheable is to make it a lot more, um, cover a lot more cases. So before, uh, for example, any object that had a script on it, even if that script wasn't doing anything, was, was considered non-cacheable. And so we would have to send you that object every time. Um, we, we changed it, it's, it's much more uh, heuristic driven. Basically, if, if an object hasn't changed anything about its outward appearance or um, behavior, then it's considered to be cacheable, like, like based on, I think, a, a time threshold of like a minute or so. If it hasn't changed in the last minute, we call it cacheable. So anyway, what, what that means is if you set this flag, um, the simulator will send you all of the cacheable objects in the region. It will prioritize the order it sends them to you so that the important ones appear first, but it will ultimately try to send them all to you. And then those objects are, are in the viewer's uh, control for or whether or not to, uh, to keep them in memory and, and when to uh, to draw them and unload them and whatnot. But for, th for objects that are actually changing their state, that's still something that the simulator controls and decides when to send you. So um, that that's a much harder uh, system to put in the viewer's hands, at least the way things are set up now. Might there be any uh, interest? Yes, I think I understand now that, uh, and when you opt in, it will also not send you these uh, kill uh, uh, messages on when you move too far away from, from the object, the sim will let you decide when you want to delete it. Correct. Um, yeah, if you get a kill object message under the new scheme, um, that means the object was actually deleted and you should remove it from your cache. Um, what, okay, what we got it. Yeah, one of the side effects of the old behavior is if you actually fly, you log into one region, fly from that region to a, to a neighbor, um, you'll get all sorts of kill objects for the region you, you started in, and you'll actually remove those from your cache file, and, and the cache file you write out to disk ends up being really small or, or even uh, non-existent, meaning you've lost everything you cached in that region you started in, which is... It, it will also send you kill objects if you move uh, from one end of the sim to the other. You don't have to go to, to another sim. It, it would kill all the objects that are away, uh, further away than your draw distance. Yeah, that, that's that's true. In the in general case, I'm just talking about a, a particularly bad case where you can actually lose the entire contents of, of the region just by flying away from it. But yes, I mean, that was the behavior, um, and that's what we want to change. Okay, this sounds like a really useful improvement you made there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we think so. A, a lot of a lot of time has gone into balancing the uh, performance uh, because one of the side effects of the viewer holding on to more object information is a bigger memory footprint. Um, it turns out that the bandwidth wasn't so much an issue. Uh, these object updates really don't take up a lot of bandwidth if you're not loading their textures. Um, but it's just the the memory overhead of of, um, of track, keeping track of the objects and their geometry and everything could be significant. And so we spent a lot of time just tuning that so we're, we're back within, um, often using less memory than release, um, and sometimes just a little bit more. Um, so so that, that's that's where a lot of the, the recent work has gone into. But uh, when you guys integrate this code, you shouldn't see any uh, regressions in, in memory usage, hopefully. It sounds like um, some real improvements. Thank you, Richard. I wish there was a, there was another flag to tell the sim, you know, just send me updates for things that you think I don't see, but I really want them. Yeah, that's that would be nice, but uh, you know, we got to balance it. Yeah, but there was there was a lot of a lot of bugs with the with the the, the interest list changes with stuff like uh, uh, breedables and animals not updating behind you and. Uh, like the sliding doors I mentioned, and also playing sounds from uh, 
from objects that you don't see but you should be able to hear them because they are behind you it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to hear the sound coming from them and stuff like that yeah that, that's that's a fair point i know we did uh touch some of that behavior a little bit uh, i don't know if uh, we've managed to improve any of that uh with with interesting ones but i'll, I'll pass that request along to andrew um and Maybe he has some ideas for, for stuff we can do there. And the last bit, yeah, this uh, this uh, new flags. Do, is there uh, by any chance a wiki page uh, documenting them, or uh, we'll have to fish it out of the source code somewhere? Um, I, I plan on writing up a, a, a wiki page just summarizing what I explained here, um, and I'll, I'll have a snippet of code showing you know, which flags control which behavior. But it, it, I mean, the flags themselves are, are pretty much uh, you know, self-documenting. It's just the uh, the complicated stuff is actually how we deal with the um, the extra over overhead of, uh, of getting all these objects that you can't necessarily see. I mean, just to give you an idea. Um, we do occlusion calling now on the um, at the level of uh, cached objects. So uh, whereas normally the renderer will like not create uh, geometry for stuff that's inside a house, for example, we don't actually even uh, load those viewer objects out of cache if they're included. So we're, we're just doing going you know to extra uh, degree of effort to uh, to, to keep the memory footprint down and the performance up. But uh, yeah, that stuff will, uh, I plan on writing up on the wiki page. Yeah, great, thank you. You're welcome. Did anyone else have any questions? All right, well, thanks for your, uh, your interest. And, thank uh, you, Richard. Very good. We're looking forward to it. Great. Is it back to you, Oz? Yeah. Okay. Thank you a lot. Uh, that was that was really great. Um, so let's see. Uh, what else have we got updates on? Monty is here, so let's get a. Uh, a few words on HTTP and how it's evolving. Okay. Um, mostly, it's been a certain way. About two weeks ago, I pulled the trigger on the internal QA. And just have not been able to get a QA resource. Um, so it's sitting on the side. Once it passes, it will become a... It'll go into a public repository, and um, there will be a project viewer build, etc. Uh, as well as one third-party library update uh, for libcurl. Uh, again, just sitting on the side, ready to go, and it'll go out the door when we're ready. Um, future stuff, I've actually started the next phase of the uh, HTTP work. There will be a bigger round of library updates associated with that. Uh, I've already started updates on OpenSSL, Aries, Zlib, and Zcurl, and... Um, fixing the dependencies that go along with it. So that will be in the phase that comes afterwards, which I hope will be shorter than the previous two phases. I, we must know, I mostly know what I want to do. Um, but I do have some server work to do as well. Uh, so it's just stacking up, waiting for resources. We have a uh, flood of irons in the fire, and uh, that's the downside of that. That's all I've got. Ready to go? Waiting for QA. Go QA. Uh, so, as, as soon as that's gotten past QA, it will all appear in the normal sequence, um, and and hopefully we'll we'll all get to play with it. Um, Nix is here, and I believe we have updates about Sunshine. Yes. 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 Uh, about uh, roughly an hour ago, I uh, pushed out. Uh, our latest code changes to Sunshine External. Uh, link is right there. Um, so the state of it is the uh, AIS v3 uh, API has changed a little bit since our last code push. Um, 
So please uh, do do grab the latest uh, if you are uh, doing a test branch. Uh, it is it has not gone through QA. It is not 100% finished yet, but we are nearing the end of our work. Uh, there are still some bugs to hunt down, um, but we are. Uh, trying to get more and more stable. Um, so this is not ready for release yet, but this would be a great time to start merging and uh, testing your viewers against uh, the new inventory system. Uh, and to that effect, we have a few uh, regions up on Aditi that should have the new system enabled. Uh, the Sunshine test regions on Aditi um, should work for that. Um, so that should have the new capabilities and uh, the viewer from Sunshine External or any merges from it should uh, use the new inventory functionality. Um, bit of a warning, uh, since the API did change since our last push, uh, please don't log in with old merges to those regions. It will cause inventory corruption. Um, the current release viewer should be fine. It's just old merges that uh, are problematic. Well, that's good to know. Uh, yes, Latif is right. Uh, in this, we do have our initial code to remove uh, the big texture upload code from our viewer. Um, so if your viewer uh, to have that code uh, for other grids, then you will want to be careful in your merging. Well, we've got to try to sort out what is uh, cleanup code and, and what is new code that's needed when we do our merge. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be reasonably straightforward. Uh, there are only a handful of commits uh, related to the cleanup itself. Um, we didn't have a lot of intermediate commits, otherwise it would have uh, caused our branch to be broken, uh, and we were doing other things at the same time. Um, uh, are there any questions as to the viewer, the state of the project, uh, anything along those lines? Uh, none for me. Hey, anybody? Uh, I don't have any f any news on any of our other sort of ongoing things. Uh, group bands, um, I, I believe, is also stuck in the lack of QA problem um, that Madi's struggling with, and um, we, we we do have an awful lot going on, uh, both visible and not yet visible. Um, and uh, and so there's a lot of competition for for testing. Um, and we were hoping we could get uh, the group band. Is the group band stuff on the server? I mean, the functionality for it um, uh, is it already released server side? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. I can try to find that out before next time if if we haven't got another update. It is server side. It was explained several times already. Well, I, I know that it runs server side. I'm saying, is it already on the is server now? She wanted to know if it was deployed right. server side. Yeah, last and I don't know the answer. Last I heard, uh, Baker was looking at getting a couple regions up on the beta grid. Um, now, so it's not happened then. or not. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, okay. Pipelining is exciting. Uh, so I think that's pretty much what I've got, so... The floor is open for random issues. And I don't actually have any.
So I get to quit early this afternoon? Is yeah, Latif's writing. Latif's oh. typing. <laughs> Not yet. Wishful thinking. Well, I might as well say it. The, the only remaining question uh, regarding uh, the group bans is uh, whether this long outstanding thing of the chat, the current chat session is addressed. I mean, if you eject somebody from the group, will they be kicked out of the of the current ongoing chat session? And I, my understanding right. is that those those are two different systems and that they, they, they don't talk to each other. So the group ban will not affect it, but it would be nice to get that fixed as you know, as long as we are fixing things in groups. Well, my understanding is that that's. The current implementation relies on the viewer doing both of those things, um, which, yes, I agree it's suboptimal, but um, uh, I believe that that's the way it's implemented right now. And I don't know that there's any plan to change that. But I don't know that there isn't either. Because of the changing that, it kind of renders group. So useless, at least no, it, it, it just it requires more work. You know, we can do what we did before. Is you can mute the current session and then inject somebody, and they cannot chat in that session. And if they try to get back in, they will not be able to. Right. So it it can it oh, can work, true. but it it does require a bit more work. But yeah, it it would be it would be nice if the group back end had some way of notifying the chat back end that you know that the, that person should be actively removed from any chats in that group but um but that's not a connection that exists right now so the viewer will sienna but if if they're on a viewer that ignores that um and there are quite a few viewers out there group for viewers that ignore that then they won't get kicked Yeah. Well, the, granted, the current session might turn out to be a, a, you know, something of a problem, but it does limit the the long term ability of somebody to be a, a nuisance in. Yeah, you know, Latif's got a good workaround. I hadn't thought of that. You can mute somebody's current uh, group. I'm ability to send messages they they can they will be able to stay in and listen to what's being talked but they won't be able to spam anymore so that that's okay it's certainly an improvement over the current situation yeah big improvement Are we are we done? Well, thank you for everybody coming to bring us these various project updates, and thank you all for coming to with bring your questions. And I will see you at this point. We'll, I expect to be back on the every other week schedule, unless something yes, dramatic please. happens. Okay. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. We've had thanks, we've had Nick. kind of a flurry of every week, and we're gonna. We're going to see if we can stop doing that. You mean we get next Friday off? You get next Friday off. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, this was more important over the summer because I this past summer I actually was taking every other Friday off. The, I, the TPV meeting Fridays were the ones I worked on, and my vacation, my summer vacation, was spread out over all the Fridays of the summer. Um, so I actually wasn't around on those on those days. Um, I, I've stopped doing that, uh, but. Um, I do want to get back to the every other every other Friday cadence. That, that I think that's enough under normal circumstances. So we'll try to make circumstances normal for a little while. Give, give you guys some time to work on the code and get caught up. 
in real life. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Oh, well, I, I don't want you to have that much time. <laughs>